So hi and welcome back to my Power BI basic series. In this video, I'm gonna be covering the calculate function to find out the percentage of each location and how it takes up the number of new cases. So you can get from this to this with the addition of using all, divide and variables. So with that in mind, let's head over to Power BI desktop. So if you want to follow along from scratch, the data set is in the description below. But if you want to follow along while looking at the actual Power BI desktop file that I've created and is here, then you can download that too in the description below. So to give a bit of context of what calculate function does in its raw sense, how it operates as both a filter and also an unfilter. So what we want to do is take this 74 million and divide it by each of these total number of cases. So the 10 million here, we want to know how much of that 10 million makes up of that 74 million and the 9 million and the 7 million, and then have that running down here. Now, the issue is, is because of how the calculation is done. So all I've done here is do total new cases, which is using sum and then of new cases in the table. It is filtering by the location because that's what we've got here set out. And the same goes, as you can see, the number of days recorded and the number of the average new cases daily is there. And all that is, so you know, is this is just count rows. So it's telling you there are 670 rows there, 670 rows there. And then the average of each row of that amount equals to, say, 15,000 here, 14,000, 11,000 here. And that's what the average is doing here. So if we go back to the new cases, what we need to do is somehow get this 74 million to sit along here. So then we can divide it by each one and see the amount. So this is where the power of calculate comes in. Because if we now create a new measure, and then if we call this calculate, And then if we type in calculate, we then get the option to then give the expression. And what the expression is, is basically, what do you want to be whatever it is? So as we've already got some of total new cases, we just want to add in total new cases. So what you can do, you can start typing in total new cases, and then it will give you it, but it does it with the table. If you wanted to have it a little bit more shortened, you can then go, let's remove all these here and then start typing in total new cases. It then pops up with the actual measure and it will do if it's in the same table. The only time is if you're going to be using measures from a different table is when you want the full table name. It will always remember where it is if you are creating measures within the same table. And in this case, I will be. So if we press tab and then if we just do close bracket, we'll just look at calculate as it is and drop it in. And then if we format it, we now can see we have the same numbers because all you've done is basically go, what's the sum of total cases? You haven't really done anything. All you've done is just basically create another measure that's got the same measure in it. So it's gonna give the same result. What we want is that 74 million to sit along here. So the solution to this is there's an additional DAX function called all. And if you do a comma, so let, let's remove this. There we go. So we do a comma. And then we get what is now the filter function. And every time you do a filter, you can add another comma and then do another filter and another filter and another filter. And you can just keep going on and on and on. But all we need to do is tell this calculation, remove location as a filter. So we just get the total amount. And this is where all comes in. So if you type in all, select it, and then you want to find the location you're using. Now, in this example, I'm actually using the location from the age pop data. So if I show you, if I use location from the main data set, nothing will happen. So we do close bracket and then close bracket again. Nothing changes because I'm not using that column. Now, if I was to then highlight and then change this to the age population one, you now get your 74 because what has basically happened is that this has removed the context of the filter. So now we actually have that we now can then divide that and that to then give you your percentage. So if we go over to new measure and then started typing in what we want to call our new measure. So we're going to call this percent total new cases. And then we're just going to do a normal divide. So we're going to take our total new cases 
So again, do the open brackets and then type in total new cases and then divide by the calculate, which is there. And then if we save that, we can then drop that in and then we can see it needs formatting. Just then we can come up to here, click on the percentage icon and then we can change decimal places. I'm just gonna make them zero so it's easier to read. So as you can see here, we now have total new cases, which has been divided by and then given the results. So you might be thinking, great, we now have our total new cases and I'm just gonna give that one a capital N because I like it to all look in place. What's the difference between doing this way and say if I did it with the divide measure? So if we then do divide and then call that percentage total new cases, we then get divide. And then what we want to do is put in what we want to divide on. So again, it's just the same thing of like total new cases. Total new cases again, because I've done it that way. It's given me the table name in front of it. We can remove it and then we can type in. What we want to calculate by, which is the calculate function. Or measure that we just created. And then we can close brackets. And it will give you the same result. If we just quickly format it. So if we scroll down, you can see no problems. Now, the reason why there's exactly the same and no issues is because we are dividing by a number that actually exists. But if we were to say, let's switch these around. So if we go here and then if we change calculate as the main thing that's going to be calculated on. And then we're going to divide it by total new cases. So this is going to create a ridiculously high percentage. You will see errors or as they call it infinity. Now, if you were doing this in Excel, the way to get around this is to kind of go, okay, so we need to remove stuff. So if we go like if error da, 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 and create the thing, and then we want it to show, I don't know, blank. And you can do either two quotation marks or you can actually type blank and then that gives you the same result and then it will clear out those there. So you have to create this separate function, but say if you wanted to go, okay, I want it to include zeros across the board as the result. And then you can add in a zero. Now, this is why the divide function is great because if we then did the, exactly the same, all we're doing is switching these two around. So again, we do the calculate function and then we type in total new cases, just like that. No if error, no nothing like that, automatically does it. Now you're like thinking, oh, but then I want those zeros. And you go like, ah, and then all you do is add a comma. And then this is where you can put your alternative result, which is a zero. So now you can do that. And then you go, ooh, there we go. We have zeros. So that's why divide is really useful because you can then get around the whole issue of any sort of errors popping up. And you have the functionality to do it there. And it's so much cleaner, so much nicer, and you don't have to keep doing all these build outs with if error. So I'm going to quickly change these back and then we're going to use the divide version. So now I'll clean that up and put it back to its normal format. So we can see here, I put it back to total new cases divided by the calculate. So now we've actually got what the total amount is. Now, because we've done this on the location and in this particular instance, you've got different locations are under different continents. So if we were to drop in continent, we can see Europe is what I've selected so far. And so we wanted to add in North America and South America. You can suddenly see there's different amounts in here, even though the total is now 171 million. And the reason is because we're doing it by the location, we haven't removed the filter context and continent. So if we use the top example here with the US, they've got 48 million new cases, but 84% is not 48 million divided by 171 million. 
but it is of what the percentage of the total in the North America continent, what the United States take up. So that's where the 84% comes in. And the same with Brazil, they got 21, almost 22 million of the 38.7 million. And that makes up 57% of South America. And we can see United Kingdom take up 14% of what is in Europe. So in, in essence, you can now see which ones are the top ones with the highest amount of cases in each different continent for the three we have selected here. Now, say if you wanted to know the percentage of all three continents and where these different locations sat, you'll need to add in a way to be able to remove all parts. So in a sense, remove all the context so we can look across the whole board. So to do that, we want to create another measure using calculate to do that. But then if we do that, then we have to create another measure for that one. And then also another measure for that one. And you can see we start having loads and loads of measures. So a way to do it, instead of doing two measures and just do it in one is if we start to use variables. So if we remove the continent now, and then start creating a new measure using a variable. So if we call this one uh, percentage total new cases, all, let's call that all total new cases, we can then start typing out what we want to do. Now, variables, they can grow and to sort of look at them on one line, like I've been doing so far with the calculate, because it's quite a simple and also the divide, because they're quite simple to read, you can get a way of looking at them that way. But ideally, if you're ever dealing with any syntax with anything, it's always good to kind of layer them out so you can visually see each point as it plays out within your calculation. So the best thing you can do is once you get to this point, if you hold down alt and then press return, you can then move down to another line. And then this way you can start typing out your calculation. So it's more easier to read by spacing it out. So if we start with our variable, a variable starts with VAR. And this is basically saying, okay, what do you want to start calling your variable? In this case, we want to say, we want to just call it total. There's certain things which you can't use a name for. You can't use spaces within the names. So try and be sensible when you're trying to figure out, okay, what's the more logical name to sort of give it. The shorter, the better, because then it's just easier just to kind of pull up when you need it. But it's all just stored within this particular measure. So you can reuse them in other ones. So once we type in what we're going to use here is total, then we do equals. And then this is where we start creating our calculation. So if we type in calculate and then we've got open brackets. Now I'm going to start typing this out in a more readable format. So I'm going to press return and then tab in so we can see what we've got here. And then we want to do total new cases just like we did before, like so. And then we want to do a comma. And then once we've done the comma, we want to stop that from popping up. We then do alt return and then we come in and then we want to do our all. And this time we want to do all on the whole table instead of a particular column. So if we do the table, which is that one, and then if we do a close bracket, we now have our all function done. We don't need a comma because we're not going to do any more functions and then do a return. And then because now we need to finish off the calculate, we can then do a close bracket to give us calculate. So now if I go down here and then type return and then press alt return again. And then if we type in total, we'll see down here, you've got your total. And if we select that, what we should have now is a result that gives us 71 million. Fingers crossed. And there you are. So I'm not going to format this because I am going to make this into a percentage. So I'll leave it as it is for now. But as you can see, we now have the 71 across the side. And if we now drop in continent, you can see it doesn't change, but the original one does because it's assigned to the location. So if we bring this in a bit, let's remove the average new cases for now. There we go. Now we can see it a little bit better. What we need to do now is add in the divide. But as you saw, when I did return, I just did the return of the result. So now 
if we go back to where we've done our return on our variable, we can start typing in, just like we did with the other measure, so the percentage of total new cases is divide total total new cases divided by the new total that we've done here. And if we do that, close bracket and press return and then do percentage and then click off here so you don't see the thing anymore. We can now see the percentage of the result. So if we were to sort of remove different ones here, we can now go back to the original for say Europe. We can now see Europe as a continent. We can see the number here because that's what it was. And that's what this one's doing. So this one's dividing that amount by that amount. But what it's done is also kept all of them. So you can see at the moment, Europe makes up 43% of the total of these three continents. Once you add all of them, it's hundred percent. And the same if you do like North America, you can then see North America takes up 34% and 23% for South America. So if we go back, now we can see the percentage of the total of those three continents. The United Kingdom makes up, Italy makes up 3%, Poland 2%. And then if we start adding in other ones, we now can see United States. We now know 84% of total new cases in North America are made up by United States. But out of these three continents, they take up 28%. And then if we add in the rest, then we can see Brazil 13%. So now you get these two different results, but then all using just a calculate function and just a slight tweak on the all gives you a different result. And that is the power of calculate. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful and please like, share and subscribe. Let me know if there's anything you want me to cover in future videos in the comments below. And as always, until next time.